is how to play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. I haven't played Dragon Quest Builders 2 in several weeks, and that's a playthrough that I played, you know, over the course of July and August, and I really like the game, and by the way, I should say this, I'm not quitting the game. Some people were like, oh man, Phil hasn't played it in weeks, I guess it's over. No, it's not, it's just that, that was the playthrough that very much was during a time period when, you know, there were no new releases out. And it was a way to have variety in my content, um, so that I wasn't just constantly playing the same one or two games. But, obviously, when there's other new releases out, they're gonna take priority, okay? So, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is continuing, um, and I want, I'm thinking, I may have to, at this point, make it like a late night stream. Only because I don't see how else I'm gonna have time to really play it, uh, because I don't really have any real daytime stream openings for it right now. So maybe I'll do that Wednesday night, I'm not sure. You know, I might just ask you guys or see what people are feeling like once we get to Wednesday, okay? Uh, Thursday, I'm off. Thursday's my day off from streaming this week. I'm back on Friday, and quite frankly, I don't know what I'm playing on Friday. Because it really depends on how the rest of this week goes, the three more days this week that I'm streaming. Uh, as you guys know, I've been telling you, financially, I'm in a really bad position. I'm still in the red when it comes to my bank account, which means even with all the, the money that I've raised this week, I still haven't raised enough to get myself back to the black, and I've got... <sighs> I believe it's three bills, I want to say, that are going to be attempting to clear in the next few days. It's a money pit. Um, I don't get paid by Twitch until the 15th. So, you know, with six days to go before potentially I see any money from Twitch, uh, very, very uh, hairy position. And sadly, uh, I would love to say, oh yeah, let's play let's, let's play Borderlands 3 this Friday. I, I can't even really afford it. You know, it's going to be dependent on, number one, how many contributions come in during the week, and number two, if someone maybe gifts some PlayStation Network credit, so I can just get the game that way, via my, my Amazon wishlist. Um, but yeah, if neither of those things come together, then I guess I'm not playing Borderlands 3 starting this Friday, okay? Um, it sucks. I don't like being in this position as a content creator, but the truth of the matter is I have more than enough other stuff to do. It's not like I don't have games to play. I have tons of stuff that I can potentially play until I, I get back on my feet here. But it's, you know, that's just life. That's the reality kind of right now. Uh, with everything going on in my life is that I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and... If I don't have the funds to buy the new game, I can't buy the new game, right? So, we'll, I guess we'll see what happens. On Friday, I may be starting up Borderlands 3, or we may just be continuing on with the current playthroughs that I'm doing. Uh, I guess we'll see. Alright, everybody. Yes, take it to job. Oh my god, here we go, moron. <clears throat> I have a job, it's much better than yours. I am the Toe Master. Did a 50-bit cheer, and says, I'm allergic to gluten, so I can't use the sandwich emo, but here's 50 bits for Gatorade. Alrighty then. Thank you for the cheer. Then he cheered again. He says, here's a big old tip for you, Philly Cheese Stream. God damn, I want to... Alright, enough of this. Captain k did another 100-bit cheer and says, With all the business pros know that you are... What? You are to go into the red as much as you can while stashing away cash. Then you file for bankruptcy one time allowed only. What on earth are you talking about and what the hell does that mean? I have no idea. Anyway, let's continue on. I'm the lol cow. You know, please, if you can at all, and you want to be supportive, please tip me. I need the help, I do, uh, to get out of this financial situation, you know, and so tips are helping me more than, way more than anything else right now. Yep, I'm toxic. The Detractor Factor tipped me $5 and says we want to see your tax returns along with all of your bank statements and credit reports. Okay, sounds good, I'm sure you do. Thank you for the $5 tip. You're the top tipper of the day. <laughs> Devour. Devour. Excuse me. All right, this next one is kind of funny. We're gonna, I'm going to read this one out only because I think this is kind of funny. All right. Toxic toilet juice. Good start. Did a 50-bit cheer. And asks the following. Get ready. I don't mean to insult. Now, you know when they start with I don't mean to insult, it immediately means there's an insult coming right after, right? Like, you know that. Or else, why would they say I don't mean to insult? <laughs> All right. I don't mean to insult. 
but I'm a bit suspicious of the fact that you suddenly stopped house tours after having tax issues. Are you buying things around the house that you don't want us to see? It's obvious. Obviously. <laughs> and obviously I'm looking for more and more. I mean, you had Jasper and you never told us. What else do you have around? First of all, that's actually not what happened. Um, I stopped doing house tours in 2017, essentially, um, when my life changed. When I decided actively in 2017 that sharing personal things about my life that had nothing to do with my streaming was hurting me detrimentally in a massive way. You know, and this is coming from someone who since 2008 um, had been making videos and since I think it was like 2000, I want to say it was 2009 when I made the reveal video of what I looked like and everything. Uh, and I was, you know, on a daily basis, I was basically sharing everything with you guys about what I was up to. Uh, you know, any new additions and things that I had to my my condo when I lived in the condo in Connecticut and into the house here. You know, I was taking pictures of various things and stuff. Um, you know, it was basically a situation where uh, I was very transparent about everything going on in my life. You guys were aware of everything that was going on in my life because I shared it all with you, right? Um, and, you know, that was fun until, sadly, people decided that I was, like, the biggest villain of the internet. And they were now going to use every little thing in my videos to try to hurt me. You know, so, per, I'll just give you a, one example, all right? A single example to give you some perspective for those of you who may not be aware of how this has happened, okay? So, around the year 2015, 2016, around that time is when basically YouTube fell apart at the seams and my YouTube channel lost a lot of its notoriety and popularity for various reasons, mostly false copyright strikes, but many other reasons as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my income dipped significantly, and it was during those years that I was trying to lean on Patreon a lot. I was trying to, you know, urge people to contribute to your very various means so I could stay a full-time YouTuber, okay? Well, as this was happening, all right, people would basically watch when I did videos and vlogs in my home and use these against me. So during, I'm not even kidding you, during an episode of DSP Tries It, okay, someone in the background of one of my videos noticed that I had a coffee maker, in the background, and it was one of the automatic Keurig coffee makers. They took the picture of the coffee maker and went online to try to figure out the model of the coffee maker that it was. They found someone selling this coffee maker on Amazon, I'm not even kidding you, for like four or five hundred dollars, and then proceeded to basically try to share that as factual information and say five, Phil has a five hundred dollar coffee maker in his, his kitchen, uh, and he's trying to ask you guys for money. He's a scam artist, you know, how dare you? Now, just think how insane this is, all right? Now, the truth of the matter is, and here's how silly this situation is, I had had that coffee maker for years, okay? That was a coffee maker that I had when I lived in Connecticut. And the reason that that coffee maker was so expensive on Amazon was because it was outdated by like four, three, four years, but apparently it was a model that a lot of people liked. So those who had kept it in stock basically could sell it at a really exorbitant price because you couldn't buy it in stores anymore. So what this idiot was seeing on Amazon was an insanely overinflated price for this coffee maker because it was an outdated model that people really liked and you couldn't buy anymore. It was out of manufacturing. Uh, so saying, oh, Phil has a $500 coffee maker, you know, a completely ridiculous thing to say because it's not the case at all. When I bought that coffee maker years ago, by the way, I bought that coffee maker during my height of the days of YouTube when I was making ridiculous money on YouTube, and I could afford to buy an expensive coffee maker if I wanted back then. But regardless of that fact, it was never $500. I think, if I actually rethink way, way back, it might have been, like, maybe between $1 and $200 because I got it on sale. Really? I had to. I had to lie. Because I never told you the truth. I didn't feel like it was going to benefit anyone. Um... And I wanted a nice coffee maker because I felt that having fresh coffee when I was doing, doing my YouTube videos, this was, you know, back when, when, around the time when I was just starting with direct capture and everything. So, you know, you're talking a time when I wanted to have, like, caffeine with me constantly when I was recording and stuff. Um, <clears throat> you see, it's just really ridiculous. Huh, CTE900 just said, I just checked Amazon. My discontinued keyboard is worth over 350 bucks now. What a great way to value items. But do you guys see the point I'm making? Is that this is what happened when I was sharing everything with everyone. These really messed up people would take little things from the videos that I would do of vlogging in my house and somehow find a way to screw with me. Um, let me just let me give you another uh, one more example without any specifics. Someone saw something laying around in a video that should not have been left out, used that to contact a company, impersonate me, and make changes to an account that I had. I'm not exaggerating. They basically found in a video there was something lying around on a counter. 
and they used that to figure out that I had an association with a particular company. What? They called the company, impersonated me, and screwed up everything with that company. And then I had to, after the fact, go back and try to fix all those things that they fucked up. And by the way, that's not the only time that's happened. That's happened with other things as well, but that was just one particular thing. As a result of, directly of me making a video of stuff in my house, people fucked with me. Okay? <clears throat> so, and that's just, that's just an, a couple examples. You know, there's many things that have happened over the years. As a result of me sharing things in my house and doing house vlogs and stuff. The truth of the matter is, the stuff in my house is no one's business. All right, and no, it's not because I'm hoarding giant fucking marble statues and fountains of myself in the in the fucking hallway. I don't have a an opening foyer that looks like the fucking uh you know the mansion in Resident Evil. <laughs> you know, it's that you know there's stuff around the house that you know my God, God forbid that I have like a bottle of medication sitting on my countertop that I take and someone sees it and uses that to try to figure out if I you know oh my God, Phil's a medical condition. What could that be? You see what I mean? Wow, pathetic excuse. Just really fucked up stuff that people do, and essentially, you just get tired at some point of people being up in your fucking business and using everything against you as a negative, and I had enough. And so in 2017, I basically cut all that shit off. If you guys saw, essentially, I would I was just doing DSP Tries It at that point, and then I stopped doing it entirely in 2018, and since then, I just don't do that kind of video anymore, because um, I just don't want to share my personal life stuff, unless I talk about it on a stream, which is fine. Um, that's one thing, but... For me to be, you know, you seeing stuff from my house that has nothing to do with my streams. It's none of your business. It's all, you know, it's my wife and I's business and that's it. There's just no point anymore, all right? And you have to understand that, that it wasn't that I didn't want to be transparent and share stuff. I did for many years and people used it to hurt me. And when finally, after years and years of this happening, I had to put my foot down and say enough is enough and kind of change up my philosophy on how I was going to do stuff on the internet. Um... It would have been one thing if you guys said, well, he always hide, hided stuff, and therefore we definitely are very, you know, skeptical of what he's got or whatever, or what he's doing there. That's not the case. I was transparent. People hurt me with the information. That's why I stopped. Like, there's concrete evidence of things that people have done to fuck with me based on stuff they've seen when I, I do house tour videos and the like. So why would you not understand, if you're a logical human, why I would do this, you know? But that's the thing. People like this guy here who cheered is not a logical human. This guy is a conspiracy theorist. This guy is a nut job. Why am I toxic? More toxic, more toxic. He thinks that there's always something crazy and sinister going on behind the scenes of someone who just streams video games every day. He's, he's nuts, you know? And you can't help people like that. They need to go seek help for themselves to understand why are they obsessing over a YouTuber, right? Why, or, or why are they obsessing over a live streamer on Twitch? Why are they obsessing to the point where every time they put out a video, we micro microanalyze every fucking frame to try to figure out personal information to hurt this person? Why are they watching videos and streams of someone they hate? It doesn't make any sense. It's not normal, healthy human behavior, it's actually quite the opposite, and these people need to seek help for this, but they won't, because no one will actually man up and tell them that they need it. Alright, so, it is what it is, um, I can't help this, this kind of crazy stuff that these people do, but, essentially, I'm not gonna share personal information that has nothing to do with my gameplay streams anymore, not because I have some secret sinister agenda, and I'm hoarding piles of platinum in my house, but because people will just fuck with me whenever I reveal anything, so, I just won't reveal anything then. Unless I so choose during, like I said, during a conversation, uh, you know, during a stream or something. Okay? And by the way, I've said this before and I'll say it again. The last two and a half years of my life, personally, have been some of the best years of my life. Because I met Kat, you know, we got married, moved in together and everything. And our life together is very, very good. Um, and we keep that as a private thing for us. Our life together is a private thing for us and it works because it's a private thing for us. If our life was fully transparent to the world, it probably would be ruined, and, and, you know, we don't want that. That's why we absolutely, absolutely love having our life together the way we do, okay? So there you go. Um, Last Rambo cheered and said, When you said that streaming provides you with the best income from everything that is provided, do you mean the jobs offered in the outskirts of Seattle or the main city of Seattle? Yes. Like, let me put it this way, Last Rambo, all right? If I were to quit streaming entirely right now and go out there and get a job, all right, Essentially, I would be starting with an entry-level job. I've been out of the job market since 2010. That's nine years, dude. Where I've been running my own business, which is something to be applauded for sure. What? But, you know, the job market out there is essentially a few things. You've got service industry, right? You've got retail industry. You've got 
office style jobs that could be broken down into many different things. But it, I would have to basically start around customer service level because I don't have background to do anything else. I certainly don't have management level experience documented anywhere. I have some continuous improvement experience, but it's 10 years ago, right? So for me to get a job outside of streaming would be starting off entry level. And entry level jobs are not high paying jobs. It would be me getting, you're starting at the ground floor and then maybe within a few years proving myself at the job and showing that I could, you know, not only bust my butt, but that I have the chops to do good work and that they would want to promote me in the company and put me into a more important or more money-making position. Um, but essentially it would be taking a, sh a, a, you know, a chance on me. So that being said, you have to understand when I'm streaming full time, this is a revenue source that, you know, I have worked on, I have honed, it has become a smooth situation where I have a set schedule, people love the streams, they expect that I'm going to be on time, they, they feel that I'm very reliable as a streamer because I've done this for so long, they know they can come by and they know what to expect to have a good relaxing time. This has become a very consistent and very, you know, good way to make money. And I'm constantly just shilling things nonstop during everything that I do, so it's because I'm, I just care about money, that I just can't help it. I'm so just enveloped in greed and money. I need money. I need money. Okay. Um, me going out and getting an entry level job, it, no matter what it is, is going to be lower paying than what I do on Strong Stream. It's just that, that matter of fact. There's no way I'm going to go out there and find a job that immediately is going to pay more than what I'm doing here. That's ridiculous. Okay. Now, that being said, my goal long term is to eventually get out of the financial situation, the terrible financial situation that I'm in, to the point where I don't have to stream full-time anymore. So if, let's say I can say, all right, I can now go get a lower-paying job somewhere and get my feet in the door and get that entry-level position and start working and get that experience that I need uh, at that job. But while I'm doing that, maybe at night I could stream a stream, one stream a day or something, like a night, a night stream uh, where we can just have fun and relax or whatever. So it's not that I would be giving up my streaming, but essentially I'd be splitting my time between the in-real-life job and the streaming. See what I mean? And then long-term... The job that I do in real life could take over for my streaming and become my main thing. And then the streaming could just be a hobby or a way to make a little bit of extra money on the side again like it used to be. Um, that's what I'm going to eventually have to go back to, you know. Because I never I never blew up on YouTube like some of these guys that made millions of dollars and now they're set for life. And they could literally not make another video and be fine. I'm not in that situation. I'm quite the opposite. And I've been saying this for years. You have to be very careful. The people who you support... Because the bottom line is a lot of these people who are virally popular are popular for the wrong reasons or they're popular because, you know, you don't really know who they are. And the next thing you know, you get a pro Jared who, oh shit, I supported this guy for years behind the scenes. He was actually a piece of shit, you know, and you supported him for how long versus someone out there who isn't huge, who needs the support, who's struggling on a daily basis. And you kind of just gave them, didn't give them the time of day because you were so into this guy who was overhyped over here. You see what I mean? Um, you got to be careful. You got to be careful who you lend your time and support to because you may have ended up supporting someone for years who just ends up being a scum bucket versus someone who actually maybe is being unfairly treated. I'm just saying. Um, so that's the deal, all right? That's kind of my, that's what I'm looking to do, but... But yeah, any job that I get in real life, no way is going to be making me as much money as I make streaming, and that's why I have to try to do this long-term plan, okay? Phil has indoctrinated children who send him money, blatantly milking for money. It's a money pit. It's gone. Just gone like that. In an instant. Fucking gone. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I eBay. Contributions are mandatory. But I need your help. I am appealing directly to you. No decency, no respect, no common sense, no fucking maturity. Is the guy who just doesn't get reality. <laughs>